When this man took my daughter, he took my dreams, my best friend. Sorry. Take your time, please. I know it's not easy. Sorry. I would never, ever want another mother to have to go through what I have had gone through, you know, or another child be taken away. You can never tell the outcome of an incident on a loved one. The thoughts of inexistence are traumatizing. While we focused our gaze on the nine-year-old Amber, who was abducted and killed in a gruesome manner in 1996, the ultimate question we have is, where are her parents? We are as interested in this as you are. In today's video, we will be talking about Amber from her parents' perspective. You definitely would like to see how much progress they have made on this case. Stay glued for the untold discoveries. Exactly 27 years ago, on the 13th of January 1996, nine-year-old little Amber and her baby brother Ricky, who was just five years old, went out to have some fun in an abandoned parking lot of a grocery store in Arlington, Texas, while on a visitation to their grannies. Living in the moment and basking in exuberance, they were riding their bicycles. Little did the family of Hagerman know about the lurking cloud of wickedness that was soon going to envelop the family that afternoon. It was soon time to go home for anyone who had a curfew. Ricky thought it was a good idea to go home while the sky was bright, but Amber thought it would be thrilling to have a little more fun. After all, what was the hurry about? What started off as fun soon put everyone on edge. Amber was yet to get home and the day was growing old. Her grandfather, Jimmy Whitson, thought driving to the parking lot would bring an end to waiting. But what he drove into was nothing he had expected. A neighborhood resident who had witnessed the kidnapping of a young cyclist wasted no time in calling the police. Arlington 911, what are you reporting? Yeah, I, I saw a, a black pickup and he grabbed a little girl and took off toward town where uh -huh. and she hollered. And they were soon at the scene where Jim Kevill reported to have seen how Amber was ruffled off her bike into a black pickup truck. The identity of the abductor is described to be as a white or Hispanic man. Jimmy Whitson found out in the most horrible way that his granddaughter had been taken away by an unknown man to an unknown place. The missing Amber soon became everybody's business as it was filed as a kidnap case that set both the residents, families and authorities on the lookout. One of Arlington's greatest nightmares came and passed without any sign of little Amber. On the fourth day of an intensive and extensive search, after Amber was declared missing, a man who was just taking a walk with his dog found a lifeless and brutalized body at a creek bed lying abandoned without any sign of life. The body was reported and confirmed to be Amber Hagerman. We have late developments into the Channel 8 newsroom and it is a rather ominous development in the case of nine-year-old uh, Amber Hagerman. Apparently he was walking our dog and uh, he had looked over the fence and had saw something white, looked again and noticed that it was a body. According to the autopsy carried out on the body, Amber had been held captive for two days, sexually assaulted and gruesomely murdered. Her throat was cut open and what was left on her was nothing but only the sock on her right foot. The death of Amber was not just like the regular cases that had happened in Arlington or anywhere in the neighborhood. It broke everyone to know that the former warm and homely city has made a horrible history that has left her families and friends in shambles. Everyone who had hoped that Amber would be rescued alive and safely to reunite with her family soon became heartbroken, and their hopes were cut really short. After the death of Amber in her honor, some interested persons raised an opinion for the need of awareness against horrible things of this manner from reoccurring, and the authorities saw a relevance to it. The local radio, TV stations, and newspapers adopted the idea, and ever since then, Amber Alert has been on a good course, hoping that one day justice would be duly served. Today we're unveiling the Amber Plan. A first ever emergency broadcast system alerting listeners to child abductions. Fast forward to 2003, when the Amber Alert system became a national program mandated by the ruling president at that time. It soon spread across the United States. The Act of 2003 will greatly assist law enforcement in tracking criminals who would harm our children. On the 30th of April 2003, President George Herbert Walker Bush signed the Amber Alert in the presence of her family members and supporters. Currently, over 900 children have been rescued through this system, so many families have been reunited, and some have gotten closure in their quest. Sadly, we know of a noble quest that is still a mystery. Who murdered Amber? After several involvements of the authorities, Amber's case was so disturbing to be discarded that even the FBI got invested in the case. Unending interrogations and investigations, both legal bodies and volunteers sought answers. 
Unfortunately, all evidence that could have led to the perpetrator had been washed away in the creek. We are only left with theories and brain work. The clues and logic were unlimited, and they followed up on numerous leads that amassed up to about 8,000 without finding a base. Who knows if the next one will be the icebreaker? Theories have been going on for years and no one knows when they will end. The effect of Amber's death took a toll on her family and this seems unrecoverable. Since the reality of this incident dawned on her family, things had never remained the same for Amber's parents and they thought of going their separate ways. They were initially on the verge of divorce in 1995 but began in 1996 with Donna having custody of the kids. After the divorce was finalized, Amber's mother decided to maintain a very low profile in order to avoid criticism from the public. She remarried and went on with her marital life as Donna Norris. But we cannot say the same for Amber's father, Richard Hagerman. He suffered severely from alcoholism after the death of his only daughter, making it more difficult to believe that his daughter's killer exists freely while Amber is no more. Richard could not take hold of himself. He lost himself to alcohol and couldn't get out of it till he lost his job and couldn't get a new one due to his mental incapability. Tragically, while seeking closure for his daughter, Richard Hagerman died in 2007 without answers. Ever since Richard passed on in 2007, Donna has stepped up to be in several interviews and has spoken to the public about her hope and how fulfilled the quest will be once Amber's killer is apprehended. Even without hearing how strong Amber was, we can hear her loud and clear through her mother. Someone who is resilient and focused, Donna Norris has not spoken for herself alone. For 27 years, she has been the bearer of the Amber Alert system. She has been the spokesperson for the silenced, victimized, and also for hundreds of parents. In 2011, Donna Norris was nominated for the Eagle Rare Life Award, and she was awarded the 2011 Devotion Character Winner. Donna is sometimes described as a leader, a mother with enormous survival skills and devotion. She is one who is blessed with her character among a lot. But one virtue you can never dispute is her heroism. After the death of Amber, Donna worked tirelessly with WFAA-TV on an inspiring story focused on the struggles of families who do not have the resources to get off welfare. Ten days after Amber was kidnapped, Donna notified the public of her effort to strict the laws that are against sexual perpetrators, and this birthed a People Against Sex Offenders group. This new movement was just the beginning of what Donna had in store pertaining to law enforcement. From the formation of this group, the need for an Amber-inspired creation came in, and Donna embraced this opportunity. From Donna's testimony before the Congress, a national sex offender database and registry were created, and in her presence, President Bill Clinton honored and supported by signing the bill into law. I'd also like to say again a special word of thanks to Richard Hagerman and Donna Whitson. With the same energy, Donna was present at the signing of a broad child protection bill encouraging states to establish the America's Missing Broadcast Emergency Response, AMBER. An AMBER alert system to quickly post information about child abductions by President George Bush. This action gave the name to the PROTECT Act of 2003. In one of her statements, she said, It's bittersweet because AMBER has saved the lives of so many children. Norris added, It's fantastic, but I can't help but wonder what if there had been an Amber Alert when she was missing. We doubt that we would ever find out. This new Project Act of 2003 opened the room to enhance other penalties that were rampant, like abduction and child sex-related crimes. The Act did not just boost the penalties, but also boosted resource funding for a program that related to missing children, children exploitation, and even crackdowns on pornography plus graphical images that were developed digitally. You would think that Donna has done a lot at this point, so she might feel accomplished, but no. You are about to discover the parts of Amber that are rarely spoken about. On the 12th of January 2006, on the 10th anniversary of Amber's case, a ceremony was held in Washington, D.C. The purpose of the ceremony was to honor the Amber Alert by unveiling a postage stamp for Amber. Donna stepped up her duty to become the Vice President of Amber Child Safety Systems, a limited liability company aimed to create and design a comprehensive and inclusive child identification and recovery system based on the information used to locate missing and abducted children. This new regulated body, the Amber Child Safety System, was designed to hasten the law enforcement and others in the search for missing children. A large audience of child advocates across the country have keyed into the system and showed the system with appraisals. With her engrossed involvement in the welfare of victimized individuals, Donna has been able to heighten her focus and passion. She became a diligent member of the board of directors for the Tiponi Foundation. Still, within the company of like minds, the Tiponi Foundation is a standard and approved organization whose basic service is to look after the welfare of psychologically displaced persons who have suffered from abduction and sexual abuse 
and extended assistance to the victim's family. This foundation even went as far as setting up informational programs that are very educational to other organizations alongside different options for other services. The impact of a bereaved mother cannot be overemphasized. While working relentlessly for Amber Alert, Donna joined a newly introduced TV series as a host. This show offered an inside inspection into similar havoc that deeply unravels truths behind investigational works. She is often surrounded by law-enforced cases that concern child prostitution and human trafficking. They were able to find new harness techniques, which were by public enlightenment on child safety. Even with all this charity society work Donna found herself doing at different points in her life, you would be shocked to find out some people had an interest in the case of Amber in exchange for personal gains. She has had to fight off parasitic offers that would not make the case any better. During the course of the investigation of Amber's murder, the authorities in Texas hit what seemed like a possible breakthrough in the case when they expressed that the new technology in DNA could be the silver lining for the success of the already cold murder case of Amber Hageman. And we're excited because this year there is new technology when it comes to DNA and we're excited about this year being able to submit that and hope that we can get a better DNA profile on the killer. During the 25th anniversary of this case on the 13th of January 2021, the police and members of Hageman's family assembled for a news conference to make a renewed plea to the community for information about her abduction. There was even a $10,000 reward for a tipster who provided revealing information that finally led to an arrest or a conviction. The reward is definitely worth it, but no one seems to have the right information to lead to an arrest. The department announced its plans to submit evidence from the case later in the year for the cutting-edge form of testing. We've maintained for 25 years that we believe could possibly uh, provide us with results that could be a, a DNA profile. That's what we're, we're working on, is trying to enhance that. It's evidence we've maintained um, this, all this time. These were Colby's words to Fox 4 of Dallas-Fort Worth on the case of Amber Hageman. Our goal is that someone in the community witnessed something and didn't come forward 25 years ago because they were afraid or didn't want to be involved, Arlington Assistant Police Chief Kevin Colby said during the press conference. For whatever reason, we need people to explore their thoughts for anything that could be of importance to our research. Donna Williams did not fail to address hundreds of audiences, even if it took a lot from her. On the 25th anniversary, Donna said, I miss her every day, and she's just so full of life, and I want to know why. Why her? She was only a little girl. I'm not going to give up. I still have hope that he will be caught one day. Ricky Hageman, Amber's brother, also recounted how he'd gone into shock after the incident. This is nothing that any sibling should be tortured with. He said, I didn't quite understand what was going on. I just knew my sister was taken from us. She was my best friend, like a second mother. I think about her every day, every second. According to authorities, the suspect is a Caucasian or Hispanic guy, under six feet tall, with a medium frame and brown or black hair. He was in his 20s or 30s at the time of the incident, so apparently the suspect has lived 25 years more than he should have, based on the crime he has committed. Sometimes life breaks and makes us be what we are. We can say the same for Donna Norris. The fight for justice has been tough, but Donna has been able to outsmart the toughness with her resilience and hardworking spirit. If you've been following this story from the beginning, you already have seen how much heroism Donna has played. Donna has demonstrated remarkable courage and dedication in pursuing her ambitions and her example has inspired numerous other women and men. She urges others to speak up and take action since, as she frequently emphasizes, the outcome affects millions of people. According to Rare Life, Donna is emphasized as the truest example of a devoted character, and I am sure you support that too. All these global recognizations come. While we keep talking about Donna and other supportive bodies, we have a sergeant who has, since the incident of this case, been working tirelessly to give Ricky and his mother the closure that they so deserve. On the 27th anniversary held in Amber's honor, Sergeant Lopez said, This case is personal to me because I've been involved in some aspect since the day that Amber was abducted. Also, it's personal to me because during the years I've come to know Donna Williams, Amber's mother, and Ricky Hagerman, Amber's brother. So that makes it more personal to me as well. I would love to be able to give Donna and Ricky and the rest of the members of their family the answer to the question that they would like to know, and of course that is, who did this to Amber, and bring that person to justice.
Sergeant Ben Lopez was first involved as a part of the task force officers set up for the Amber case when he gave an account of the ordeal to Arlington PD. I responded to the area and began looking for the suspect vehicle, began looking for Amber, and began, of course, looking for the suspect. What was a kidnapping investigation then became a murder investigation because of the overwhelming number of leads that we were receiving at that time. The department formed a task force to investigate her murder. I was one of the original members of that task force, Lopez told KSAT. Sergeant Lopez has not only shown his passion for his job, but he also understands the need for the truth and how much it matters to the people, most especially her mother. Donna has been willing to continue with the legacy that makes her proud of her daughter. The Amber Alert, I'm very, very proud of it because it is saving, help saving our children's lives. It's helped bringing our children back to mommy and daddy. And so it's another legacy from my daughter that she didn't die in vain, that she is still taking care of our little children as she did when she was here. And I'm very, very proud of my daughter and for all she has done for our children here. The global revolutionary movement of the Amber Alert system has brought so many families together to marry, mourn and heal, knowing fully well that you are not alone despite the overshadowing cloud of loneliness. The Arlington PD has been able to disclose that even with the delay we are facing with the preparation of the DNA test, the advancement of DNA technology is progressing and there is the possibility of identifying the killer. This advancement we are discussing has solved similar cold cases from the 80s and 90s. Although the evidence is not disclosed, we hope that sooner than we expect, justice will be brought to light to give Amber the one thing we owe her. Donna pledged in one of her recent speeches that she would never give up on discovering Amber's killer. She addressed them directly. I miss her every day and she's just so full of life and I want to know why, why her? She was only a little girl. And to Amber's killer, I'm asking you today, please turn yourself in, give Amber justice.